Welcome to this tutorial about requirements and resources available to complete the inflow and infiltration component of the Comprehensive Wastewater Plan update. Inflow and infiltration, or I&I, &I, are terms that describe clear water that enters the wastewater systems. Excessive amounts of I&I &I can result in public and environmental health concerns if untreated sewage discharges to basements, rivers, or lakes. Inflow and infiltration are separate but related challenges. Each has unique sources, methods of entry, and effects on the wastewater collection system. Both are costly to communities due to increased conveyance and treatment costs. Inflow is typically stormwater that enters the wastewater system from point sources such as broken manhole covers, sewer cleanouts, sump pumps, foundation drains, and rain leaders. Infiltration is typically groundwater that enters the wastewater system through cracks and openings in sewer mains, service laterals, pipe joints, and deteriorated manholes. Since 2005, efforts by local communities, property owners, and Metropolitan Council Environmental Services MCES, have helped to reduce the regional wastewater volume by roughly 9 billion gallons per year. The flow decrease has occurred even as precipitation volumes, rainfall intensities, and populations have increased. Excessive inflow and infiltration can lead to untreated wastewater discharges. It also increases conveyance and treatment costs, consumes capacity intended for growth, and reduces the potential for groundwater recharge when clear water is removed from the natural hydrologic cycle. For communities served by the regional wastewater system or by a locally owned and operated treatment plant, there are specific requirements of the comprehensive plan to address inflow and infiltration. Each community must address inflow and infiltration to provide for the appropriate wastewater system capacity to support the population, household, and employment forecasts as described in the system statement. Requirements of the wastewater plan can be found in the local planning handbook. Each wastewater plan is reviewed by MCES staff to ensure conformance with the 2040 Water Resources Policy Plan and Thrive MSP 2040. The wastewater plan must specifically state the goals, policies, and strategies used to address I&I sources in each community. Communities must include a narrative of the plan components and may choose to include supporting maps, charts, or figures. Specific and quantitative references are encouraged. It is unlawful in Minnesota to discharge water from sump pumps, foundation drains, or rain leaders to the wastewater system. Each wastewater plan must include a copy of the local ordinances that address the prohibition and disconnection of clear water discharges. The plan must also include a summary of activities or programs intended to address I&I &I from private property sources. The wastewater plan must include a system analysis that describes the extent, source, and significance of existing or anticipated inflow and infiltration in the community. A complete system analysis should detail areas of the community with known or suspected sources of I&I. &I. This analysis should be based on information such as previous studies, infrastructure age, building practices or materials, soil conditions, or topography. Please indicate the significance and impact of I&I &I on the community. This could include the estimated volume of I&I, &I, past or future effects on public health, or the limitations on future growth. Based on the findings of the system analysis, please provide a cost estimate to mitigate I&I &I sources. Many communities have completed projects and programs to mitigate I&I &I in the past. The plan must outline future investments that the community intends to complete. I&I &I mitigation costs may be included within the Capital Improvement Program budget. If this approach is used, please refer to the program or budget within the text of the wastewater plan. A complete plan includes a strategy to implement corrective actions to mitigate I&I &I based on the findings of the system analysis. Each community has limited resources and unique challenges. Prioritization of projects based on financial constraints, effect on flow reduction, or scheduling with other capital projects should be detailed. The funding sources and amounts should reflect the anticipated costs of the mitigation projects detailed in the cost estimate. MCES Community Program staff are available to provide answers and answer your questions. Thank you for watching this tutorial. For more online tutorials and other resources, please check the Plan It page of the Local Planning Handbook.